interface of, of you, how often did that server fail? Well, as we use rate zeros for every, every server, it's an interesting case. But the first thing that happens is you should use this joint IRC channel to shout at us. If it, is, it was a master failure, then what we do next is we put one rate in the channel. And so they don't shout at us anymore. And then we just play some slate in the master. But first of all, we see the user shouting at us. And how long does this process take of shutting down the uh, moderation bit and stuff like that? Uh, setting up moderated bit like five minutes and fixing the replication itself is like in seconds. <laughs> well, ideally, I say they never fail, but with 1,800, 1,900 machines in production uh, at any point in time, you can assume that pretty much one of them has always failed. So uh, our starting point was to make that assumption that we'd operate well with some degree of, of, of permanent failure. And you know, when that doesn't happen, that's you know, all fine. But uh, when a system comes out of the loop, it typically has minor impact on the site. A very small amount of data will go away for a very short period of time. Where that data is replicated, of course, it doesn't go away. But you know, there are going to be some cases where we lose a master copy of the database. Uh, typically, we will recover that if it, let's assume it was a, a very serious failure of the machine and we're not going to be able to restart that server. Then we maintain uh, snapshots and, and dim logs. We archive the dim logs in separate hardware and we're able to rebuild the system very quickly. Sometimes we'll promote a slave to the master. So, number of, uh, of arrows in whoever we choose the right one for, for the right circumstance. But starting with that assumption that of course, things are going to fail, and probably always are. In our case, what we do is uh, we have we use like a test part, and that's proved to be pretty resilient. But when our failures happen, we simply mount the snapshots. Um, we mount the runs from because we use sand, so we mount them to different servers and just bring them up. So uh, we, uh, we rely on uh, promoting a replica more or less, uh, rather than on, uh, I've used SAN technologies and things in the past, uh, it's a typical Oracle pattern uh, for, for very important, uh, you don't really want, you don't want to lose any data, it's very, very important, it's uh, a typical pattern to use. Um, and also if your data is smaller, you move on to the SAN to the table space. Um, I think for most of the people in the audience, it's probably, uh, you, you, you would want to be able to recover the server that you have. You're probably better off investing in your hard drive, say, than, than two servers. Um, uh, as things go on, uh, if you try to recover that very server because it crashed or something, um, if you, it, what happens to us and probably a lot of other people is that if you, drive, if you tune it well and you drive enough traffic through that one master, uh, we find that it, it takes a very, very long time for the recovery to actually happen. So that makes things like a sand failover could not work too well because uh, the recovery time to recover that copy of the sand, uh, you're at odds with your tuning strategy. If you can tune your thing to do far more updates than the other guy, right? But the recovery process is single thread and you can't roll those transactions forward as fast as you were able to get it to do while it's live. Well, then you find yourself waiting and you fail over on the sand for you know, an hour, two hours, three hours to let thing recover. So we gravitate towards a promoting slave, a rugby slave, but since each of our shards also, in turn, have many, many slaves. There can be some complexities in picking one of those slaves to be the master and finding all the right uh, bit logs to play to get them all to the same point. But that's uh, probably a challenge there. But it's a great challenge to have if you find yourself in the point where you have lots and lots of servers. So for a small guy, I would say get yourself a mirroring controller uh, because I bet, uh, I bet that mirroring controller is going to fail a lot less uh, than the, uh, you know, the power suppliers. Sticking up on that, uh, advice to, to uh, the little guy here. Um, you, you, uh, we asked a couple of coordinates here, and uh, do you see any, any crucial bit of scaling technology, either hardware or software, that's not mentioned in the, in the coordinates that you would, you would uh, want to bring up? Anyone? Yeah, every, no. every day is a continual fight against the random IO <laughs> in my world. Um, I mean, as far as scaling challenges is concerned. Uh, yeah, I, was, I was thinking a uh, specific technology like oh. a tool, uh, a piece of software, a piece of hardware that, that, that you think could... could